Welcome to section 8.2, which is going to cover the topic of photosynthesis. This is a fairly large topic, so bear with me here. Now within photosynthesis, there's going to be two big sections that we're going to look at. The first section is called the light dependent reactions, or oftentimes it's just called the light reactions. We just kind of leave the dependent part out. And then we'll have the light independent reactions, one that don't directly need light, and that'll commonly be referred to as the Kelvin cycle. So if you see me saying the term Kelvin cycle, I'm just talking about the part of photosynthesis that doesn't directly, notice I say directly, uh, it'll still indirectly need light. Now the overall equation that you guys should be comfortable with for photosynthesis is that we're going to use carbon dioxide as a source of oxygen and carbon. We're going to use water as a source of hydrogen. We will not use it as a source of oxygen. The oxygen part of water will actually be used to be given off as a byproduct. This is the stuff we breathe. So we're then going to use the energy from light to allow us to take these many different molecules of water and CO2 and kind of mash them together to form sugars. This is really what we're after when we talk about photosynthesis, is we're trying to make organic molecules that can be used as structure so you can grow. They can also be used as food so they can be broken down to generate ATP later. So plants and autotrophs that do this process aren't doing photosynthesis just for the purposes of food. They're also doing it to make more phospholipids, nucleic acids, proteins, carbs, so they can continue to divide and grow, and they're going to use most of the things that they produce, not for food, but actually for storage, for structure, so that they can continue to develop as a plant. So the first part of photosynthesis is the light reactions. Now this whole purpose, this whole process is designed to absorb light because light, you can think of it as being these little packets of energy called photons. And these photons can exist in different types. We would call those different wavelengths or different colors. And so a plant that's exposed to sunlight is being bombarded by these photons. And the first step we have to do is we have to absorb some of those photons and this is going to happen at a level called the pigments. So pigments will be these protein molecules that are embedded in the thylakoid membrane. So if you remember, if we draw out our uh, basic picture of a chloroplast, we've got these two outer membranes. And then inside, we've got these smaller membranous sacs uh, called thylakoids. These smaller membranous sacs called thylakoids. And so these thylakoid membranes have pigments as well as the other photosystems, this is the rest of the light reactions, embedded in them. So that's critical. That's one of the reasons we have so many thylakoids. We've got a whole bunch of these little membranous sacs because it gives us more surface area to have more pigments and more light reactions embedded in them. So these pigments, if they're hit by the right photon of light, the right wavelength or color of light, they can absorb it. And what happens when they absorb it is one of their electrons will jump up. It'll jump away from the nucleus, and that means it has more energy. It has stored energy. We can then use that energy to power the rest of the light reactions. So this process over here, it shows some of the pigments that we normally have. Chlorophyll B and chlorophyll A are the two most common pigments that we find in plants. Now they tend to absorb blue wavelengths of light, you can see here, and they tend to absorb more in the red orangish uh, wavelengths of light over here. This is why we see that most plants look to be like a greenish yellow because they're reflecting, they're not absorbing in the green and yellow wavelength range. And so the types of, of light that essentially bounce off of the plant that then reach our eyes is this greenish yellow. So when we look at the grass, we say the grass appears to be green. It appears to be green because it's using or absorbing much of the other colors of light so green is what we see, it's the leftovers. Now there are other types of pigments that you can have. Uh, each pigment will absorb a different color or wavelength range than the other pigments. And so carotenoids is another common type of pigment. This one will appear to be more of like a yellow to a red color. And these will be found oftentimes in the understory of tropical areas because the plants, the, the taller trees, the ones that are higher, they're going to grab hold of and absorb all that red and blue light. So the only type of light that reaches the bottom if you're a plant that lives in a forest 
is typically these leftovers. It's going to be more of these yellows, more of these greens. And so there are other pigments that can absorb some of those yellows or some of those greens, but they wouldn't look yellow or green then because they're absorbing some of those. And so that's where if you ever see these pretty tropical plants that look to be more red or look to be more blue or look to be more yellow, they typically have carotenoids. They're using different pigments to absorb the light. Same purpose, absorb light, store energy, just different pigment. Uh, this is also why you tend to see when the leaves change color in the fall, there are some of these carotenoids that are naturally present even in trees, but not much of them. But what happens is the plants break down their chlorophyll to get energy from it, but they leave the carotenoids because there's not much of them. And so what you're seeing when you see the leaves change in the fall is you're seeing all those pigments that were there in small amounts, those carotenoids, uh, that are now showing up because the chlorophyll has been reabsorbed. The chlorophyll has been essentially broken down. Now, with the actual photosystems, this is where the magic happens. This is where we take the energy that we've stored in this excited electron, and we're now going to make an important molecule that we can use to make some organic molecule, because that's our purpose here is to make a sugar, to make a protein, to make a lipid. And so the energy from light, this photon, is going to excite an electron. So that's what's happening here. So we've now got this excited electron. We're then going to use the energy from the excited electron, and we're going to pass it through a series of things called cytochromes. They're just proteins that will extract energy from that particular electron. And they're going to use the energy from the electron to pump H pluses into the thylakoid. So that's going to build up this H plus gradient where inside of the thylakoid we have a bunch of H plus, and outside the thylakoid we have very little. So the H plus wants to leave. It wants to go outside the thylakoid. We're then going to use the energy provided to us by allowing the H plus to leave, by allowing the H plus to diffuse out. And that's what you see here on the far right. The H plus is going to leave. And we're going to use that energy to make ATP. So our ultimate goal from Photosystem 2, which I know it's named weird. It should be Photosystem 1, but we discovered it second, even though it's the first one. So we still call it Photosystem 2. So the first photosystem that we're going to use, photosystem 2, the whole purpose of it is to extract the energy from these electrons that have been excited to make ATP. That's the, prop that's the whole purpose of this segment. That's the whole purpose for PS2, as we'll call it. Now, the other cool thing and important thing that happens during photosystem 2 is we need to somehow regenerate these electrons because we just had where some of our pigments donated an electron that was excited to photosystem 2 and then that electron eventually went through a whole bunch of different proteins and eventually it ends up on photosystem 1 that we'll talk about next. So we've effectively lost an electron photosystem 2 has during this process. So we need another replacement electron. So the way this happens is water will be split and by splitting water, it gives us a bunch of electrons that can be given back to these pigments that are part of photosystem 2. So that way they have more electrons to get excited, to donate. It's also going to give us a bunch of H+, which is going to become part of this H+, gradient we talked about. You'll notice it down here at the bottom. It's inside the thylakoid. So it helps out with our gradient. And it also gives us oxygen. This oxygen is something we do not need. This is the oxygen that gets released to the atmosphere this is the stuff that we breathe. So if it asks about where does the oxygen we breathe come from, it does not come from CO2. It comes from us breaking down water during photosystem 2. So at the end of photosystem 2, we now have ATP to help provide us with energy to do the Kelvin cycle, the last part of photosynthesis. So now we've got the last part of the light reactions, photosystem 1. Once again, I know it's the second part, but it's still named photosystem 1. And in photosystem one, we're going to do the same general process where we're going to have an electron that's on a pigment molecule get excited by light. It's then going to be donated into this photosystem, except this photosystem is not going to make ATP. This photosystem is going to take that electron that's energized and use it to build an energy molecule called NADPH. And so the way this works is NADPH is an electron carrier. Its whole purpose is to grab electrons that are energetic and to carry them somewhere else. So we can kind of save that energized electron for later. And so this process is going to work where we're going to take an NADP plus, this is like the uncharged version of that molecule, and we're going to add two electrons and an H plus. 
and that's what gives us NADPH, which is essentially the charged version, you know, the energized version, which later on can be broken back down into NADP+, plus, plus electrons, plus H+, plus, and reused. So this is the other big molecule that we need to do the second part of photosynthesis, the Kelvin cycle. We need ATP and NADPH. Now keep in mind the electrons, which we are donating to Photosystem 1. Keep in mind it's not a big deal because we're being replaced with electrons from Photosystem 2. So we've got these electrons that are coming from Photosystem 2 that are being added from Photosystem 2. So we don't need to split water or do anything fancy. We just get electrons provided by Photosystem 2 excite them, donate them to photosystem 1, and then they end up on a molecule of NADPH. This is the last part that's going to occur in the actual thylakoid membrane. So all of the light reactions occurs embedded in that thylakoid membrane or across the, the thylakoid membrane in the case of the H plus gradient, but now we're going to be moving to a slightly different part of the chloroplast for the second section, the Kelvin cycle.